In 1964, 38 New Yorkers watched through their windows as one of their neighbors was brutally murdered. Her name was Kitty Genovese, a 28-year-old woman. The Genovese incident where a young woman coming home late at night from her work was assaulted by somebody who was one of those random crazy people. Kitty was running up the block and Winston Mosley ran after her until she reached the midpoint of the block almost directly under this street light. Mosley caught up with her and stabbed her four times in the back. Her screams were loud, unmistakable, and reverberated throughout the entire area. Lights went on in, in the windows around the courtyard, so we know that people were seeing this. Nobody called the police. Somebody who lived on the seventh floor opened his window and yelled out, what's going on down there? When Mosley heard somebody yelling out, he ran back to his car. Kitty was still alive. She managed to get up. She staggers around the corner here, still screaming. People in that building heard her as well. And she collapses inside this hallway. There's one apartment above there. It was occupied by Carl Ross. Carl opened his door at the time that Mosley returns and he saw the second attack taking place. And he did nothing. After stabbing Kitty another eight times in this very hallway, the killer ran away, leaving Kitty to bleed to death. Eventually, a neighbor called the police, but it was too late. Kitty died before the ambulance could get her to the hospital. That shocked the city. Now, it's not that a person got murdered to shock the city. That happens, sadly. It's that a person got murdered and her neighbors watched and nobody did anything. Bib Latney and I, we read about the murder as did everybody else. Here we were two young social psychologists starting our research careers. We knew about Stanley Milgram's set of experiments on obedience to authority. And we started to think about, in an offhand way, what could have produced the Genovese effect. Perhaps Kitty Genovese might have been alive today if fewer people had seen her. There were perhaps 38 people who could have responded, but each were looking to see what these other people were doing. We decided to try to create a relatively ambiguous situation to which we could see how people responded. We thought that one kind of thing that comes up that's often hard to tell whether it's a real emergency or not uh, has to do with fire. You see smoke coming through the vent. And it is ambiguous. What do you do? Hey, um, there's, there's smoke coming out from under the door in that room where I was filling out the questionnaire. Almost everybody does that if they face the smoke alone. Now let's have you face the smoke with two strangers. One person can be seen glancing at the other. The other is continuing to fill out the questionnaire. It's getting a little more smoky in the room, but nonetheless, you stay in the room. By and large, people surrounded by people who react as if there's nothing wrong, don't respond. Everybody sees the other people not reacting, so they create a definition of the situation. No emergency. To test their theories about how groups and individuals respond differently to a crisis, Darley and Latine conducted a second experiment. This time, the emergency was clearly defined. First of all, I would like to thank the two of you for being here today to help out in this study. In this experiment, one student was asked to communicate via intercom with another student down the hall. 
there's somebody, give me a little help here because I, I'm having a problem. I don't want one of these, these, these things coming on. What sounded like a real seizure in the subject's headphones was just a tape recording of an actor playing a role for the experiment. So, if somebody would, would give me a, a little, little help. Or, or, Hello? Could somebody or, help? Or, if you knew there was nobody else but you to help, you got up, you opened the door of your room, and you headed off to find the person. On the other hand, if there were three or four other people present who you heard. I would like to thank the three of you for being here today to help us with the study. We are interested in learning. You are much less likely to respond yourself. Did somebody give, give, give me a little, little help here? Because I'm having a real pro problem right now. Help me out. The responsibility any individual feels for helping is diffused when there are other people who could also help. So what can we say back to the bystanders in the Genovese situation? The first thing we can say, I think, is they got a bum rap. They were reacting the way that you or me might react in those situations. There have been many incidents like the Genovese incident since then. And there have been many incidents in which people who could help don't help.